Welcome. In this video, I'd like to address critical thinking in the course of academic research. You've probably heard your professors talk about critical thinking or recommendations to you to be a critical thinker. But what is this critical thinking and how can it be a benefit to you? In this video, I'd like to answer those questions and show you the real value of good critical thinking. Let's get started. Here, I'm displaying a Microsoft Word document in which I've written a, a short paper just to capture my thoughts on this topic. Thinking within a discipline requires accepting a system of meanings. The knowledge that we seek to learn within a discipline is a system of interconnected concepts that create a logic, a system of reasoning. When one does not always have ready access to all information related to a situation, or a formal logical system doesn't apply to that situation, one must make a best in the moment judgment of the most effective course to take so that one may make a decision that reflects all of the available information. A common system of prescriptive normativism that's evaluated based on shoulds, oughts, as in, you should do this, or one ought to do that, which is relative to a general reasoning system, may not be the most effective, and definitely not the most efficient method for decision-making during research. So, what is a scholar to do? This is where the scholar must demonstrate critical thinking. But what is critical thinking? Well, critical thinking has been defined many ways. However, the definition that I find most useful is from Elder and Paul. They defined critical thinking as a mode of thinking about any subject, content, or problem in which the thinker improves the quality of their thinking by skillfully analyzing, assessing, and reconstructing it. Critical thinking is self-directed, self-disciplined, self-monitored, and self-correcting. It presupposes assent to the rigorous standards of excellence and mindful command of their use. It entails effective communication and problem-solving abilities, as well as a commitment to overcome our native egocentrism and sociocentrism. So, critical thinking is really something that we do ourselves. We control it. We can seek to take control of our thinking, be disciplined in our application of thinking. For example, recognizing biases, prejudgments, opinions. These are all part of being human. They're part of all of us. But they may not accurately reflect empirical data out in the world. So, critical thinking is about controlling one's thought process, withholding judgment until sufficient data has been collected, or data have been collected, and being willing to change our mind, to correct our thinking when we're recognizing that it is inappropriate, when it's not critical 
critical in the sense of judgment, of it is not um, carefully processed through. So, how do we apply critical thinking to research? Well, students may assume that critical thinking only applies to their own original thoughts, irrespective of external data that's under consideration. However, critical thinking is really about thinking clearly and precisely about any data or general information that's being considered. Critical thinking is vital during academic research, as scholarly research requires becoming familiar with not only accurate data, for example, historical facts, but also the context within which those data were presented, such as, did the author of the historical article have a particular bias, an ax to grind? Did the author leave out relevant data and give, well, give some of the data short shrift and give other data a little too much emphasis? In other words, was the reporting of the data biased? That's part of critical thinking. Now, in conversations with my students, many of them, when I ask them, how do you know the information that you're reviewing during your research is appropriate, that it's of high quality? A common response is, oh, it's in the peer-reviewed literature. It was published in a, a journal in which the articles are peer-reviewed. Yes, that's one criterion for judging the quality of information, but by no means should it be the only criterion. Many, um, you may be familiar with uh, Andrew Wakefield's uh, paper on the effects of the MM, MMR vaccine leading to autism in children. His findings and his reporting has been roundly criticized. The paper has been retracted. The Lancet, the journal in which the article had been published, has apologized for uh, releasing the article, publishing the article. Wakefield lied in his reporting, and it only came to light years later that he had been paid by a company to make the claims that he did in his peer-reviewed article. So, his article got through the peer review process, where other experts review a paper prior to publication. So, back to critical thinking. This is vital during academic research because a scholar must judge the quality of the data that have been collected in the preparation of their own academic work. Now, whether that's a, a paper in response to an essay assignment or it's an oral presentation given during class. It's in this application of the analysis of the data at hand and the assessment of whether sufficient information has been collected during research that one can improve their quality of thinking about the information. So it's not just, research is not just gathering data. Research is gathering data understanding it within context, comparing it to other data on the same topic, and making a judgment of the quality of the data at hand, and not relying on the data that empirically is not of the best quality. A scholar is going to uh, have to 
put things into context when making decisions about what data to keep and which and what which data to ignore. They're going to have to verbally restate the data that allows them, the scholar, to be more efficient in reaching a decision about which data to use and which data to not use. These judgments may include considering the applicability of the data that's been acquired. Does the data collected apply to the assignment requirements? And this is really, this is how I got on the top, talking about the topic of critical thinking with some of my students this semester. They had gone off, collected data in the library, but the data they collected wasn't related to the focus of the assignment. The data they collected was interesting. It was, I found it a little bit of a pleasure to read what they had written, but I had to ultimately tell them that this is interesting, but it's unrelated to the assignment's requirements. So I, maybe simply I could say the data they had collected was off topic. Had the students been critical in their evaluation of the data, I bet they would have recognized this for themselves and saved themselves a lot of time, not just in writing that uh, material that's off topic, but now they have to go back, analyze why it was off topic, go collect on topic data, and rewrite their papers. The student that seeks to think critically about data that they've acquired may choose to employ the data in the course of creating arguments. Now, this is a very, this sentence might sound obvious to you, because isn't that what scholars do? They make arguments in their academic papers, in their oral presentations. But in the course of preparing those arguments, the scholar that thinks critically will be able to identify which data can be ignored and which data should be retained and used to best defend the claims that are presented as part of the arguments. And remember, an argument in rhetoric is the presentation of a claim, a proposition that uh, the author wishes to persuade the reader or the listener of, and defense evidence that supports the claim, making it persuadable to the audience. Now, some of the reasons for ignoring data, possibly the chosen, the collected data, are... Um, more recent than data that have been ignored, or the collected data are from a more reputable source, such as a peer-reviewed journal, which is generally a good rule of thumb. We scholars should be relying on the peer-reviewed literature. The data that is chosen and kept may offer greater detail than the data that are ignored, that are not used in the development of arguments. On the other hand, looking at it from the other side, ignored data may have been presented in an illogical argument. So, it's possible for a source to present an illogical, an uncritical argument the data that comes out of that argument is a bit like, um, I don't know, a rotten apple, sour banana. I don't know what the right metaphor is, but it's the data that comes out of a poorly constructed argument shouldn't be used in the creation of 
a new argument. Unless, of course, the new argument is about a judgment of the quality of the poor data. But uh, that's too much of a rabbit hole for me to go down in a single video. Or the, the data that are ignored might have come from a disavowed source, such as the Wakefield paper about the MMR vaccine. A scholar must also take into account their own biases so to, as to prevent confirmation bias and other fallacies in judgment. Now, we humans all have biases. We all have preferences. We all have opinions. Great. That's what makes me me and makes you who you are. those biases may not be supported by empirical broad evidence. They're just a reflection of my personal experiences, the experiences that one man has had. The experiences that I've had are unique. I am the only person who's had my set of lifetime experiences. There may be some experiences that I've had that you've also had, but I haven't had all of your experiences and you haven't had all of mine. So the biases that I have are based on my set of experiences. And I have to be aware of that when I'm doing research and I'm asking you to be aware of your biases. One of the most common problems that can be mitigated or corrected or prevented with critical thinking is confirmation bias. Confirmation bias occurs when data that are in agreement with one's opinion or preference are given greater weight than data that contradict these previously held opinion or preference. Literally, data that contradict or do not confirm a bias are given less weight than those data that do confirm the bias. So, and confirmation bias is very prevalent. I, I have it all the time, and I have to be cognizant of that and apply sound critical thinking to recognize when my I am seeking information that confirms my previously held preferences or opinions. It's vital that a scholar recognize their biases and intentionally prevent their biases from affecting the collection and the evaluation of data. A scholar must know what their preferences are and intentionally seek to acquire data that contradict these preconceived opinions so as to continually evaluate whether opinions reflect empirical data that have been reported by the majority of experts, or whether these opinions are founded solely as a result of a unique set of personal experiences. When an opinion does not align and complement empirical data, the quality of the data and the opinion must be evaluated or re-evaluated. This process of evaluation is an example of critical thinking. Now, research requires acquiring data that allow the formation of formal arguments that are logically organized with claims. Okay, I've already described this. A good argument is a claim with evidence that defends the claim, making the claim more 
making the audience more likely to be persuaded to accept the claim. Scholars must demonstrate their academic honesty and eschew, not just avoid, but I mean intentionally stay away from, excusing poor scholarship. It's not only through critical thinking that a scholar may appropriately evaluate the quality of considered data and present arguments in a manner worthy of scholarship. Now, thinking a little bit critically about my own paper, I see a typographic error, so I am going to replace this and make it grammatically correct. There we go. Now I'm happy. Critical thinking is not really difficult. It takes a bit of energy and it requires a little bit of practice, but it's not hard to do. There are many books on the topic of critical thinking. I encourage you to practice thinking critically, particularly while you're conducting your research. Now, until we meet again in a future video, I wish you the absolute best in all of your academic work, and particularly in your practicing thinking critically. Bye for now. Mika, you're a nice dog. Did you like watching me make that video? Yeah. You're still half asleep, aren't you? That's okay. Yeah. Hmm. You're a good dog, you know that? I appreciate your keeping me company. All right, I love you.